Hello, beautiful souls. Yes, I'm back, and I'm making another video, and um, it feels like it's been a long while, um, yet I feel a space has almost been necessary um, to almost just let everything that has been happening on all levels to settle. And um, so I guess today, as I was just kind of going about the morning and um, taking care of the duties that I am taking care of this week, um, I just felt this inner call to just share. And I wasn't quite sure on what it was, but um, the kind of direction that I'm leading into is the idea of decisions. And, and how it is that we can best make decisions in our life. Because I've really noticed that everything is about making a decision. You know, what we're going, from what we're going to, you know, put on to wear in the morning, to what we're going to do in our relationships, to what we're going to do um, in some big life events that, that present itself to us. And I guess the main guidance that I have um, received and the main lessons that I have learned in this is that decisions only come from um, two places. They come from two goals that are set up in our minds. And that one goal is either I am this body and this body and world is my home or I am a child of God and heaven is my home. And it's literally, those are the goals that the mind sets up um, for itself. And it's either one or the other. And as we all know, at first we believe that I am this body and this world is my home. And we basically do that because we get sucked into the physical senses of the body um, because we get sucked into the identification with the body, um, because quite frankly, this is what our entire world around us teaches us on a daily basis, that we have to make something of ourselves here, that we have to um, live by the laws here, that we have to abide by the structures in the way in which the world has set up, because that's just the way that it is. Yet over the last five years, I've almost taken a stance against that goal of I am this body and this world is my home. And instead, I've tried on a new pair of boots, so to speak. I have literally tried on what would my life be like if I really was a child of God and that my home really was heaven. And so at first, it almost looked like, you know, um, my world really shifted and, and changed um, to allow me to fully trust in this idea, um, to have complete faith in this idea, and not doubt this idea. And I have started to notice five years later that um, when we accept the idea that I am God's child and heaven is my home, that all decisions become effortless. They become so easy because I'm no longer making decisions by myself alone. I'm no longer making decisions for this body alone. I'm no longer making decisions for the bodies around me. I'm literally letting God make the decisions for me and I just listen to what guidance that is. And people might say, well, it's not that easy to just like hear God's voice. And I'm telling you, yes, it is. You know, there's a lesson in the Course in Miracles that speaks of God's voice speaks to me all through the day. God's voice speaks to me all through the day. But the only reason we don't hear God's voice speaking to us is because we're too busy listening to ego's voice. <laughs> when the ego's voice will speak of the fear and all the things we have to do in form, all of the payments we have to make in form, all of the people we have to please in form, all of the things that we have to do here. And then the ego mind starts focusing on the mistakes of our brothers. It starts focusing on the errors of our brothers. And it starts focusing on the mistakes and the errors of yourself. Then what happens in this place is absolute confusion and chaos. And of course you're unable to make decisions. Of course you're unable to hear God's voice. Because you're too busy listening to the ravenous screams of your ego make you think that your body is what you are. And so 
I guess maybe I'll give like two examples here of how this is playing itself out in my life and um, it happens all the time <laughs> but these are two really powerful ones and so I guess the first one was when we were still in California first and foremost like we're still in California we've been here for 10 months now and it's been an incredible ride because we showed up here um, literally just visiting friends and then we didn't know where we were gonna go from there and um, and so we've just we have trusted we've literally held on to the goal that I am a child of God and heaven is my home and trusted that all of the details of this form space will work itself out and it continues to um, so the two examples that I'm going to give is first and foremost the one that we had basically left the the house that we were staying in here in Fraser Park and we stayed at a friend's house for three weeks which was really helpful in and of itself and from that that um, that moment we basically realized okay well we can't stay in our friend's home for the rest of the time like something has to shift something has to change something new has to open um, at the time we felt like we really had to head to Northern California to help kind of finish off the projects that we're doing the Universal Mediation Program um, and so we just trusted we have to get up to Northern California in some way and so literally Tom and I prayed together, thank you God, you know, we trust your plan, it's already in the plan, we're here listening to your voice, let us know what the next step is, and we go to bed. We wake up in the next morning, and um, I had received a message on my YouTube channel, and the message was from a man Rex, and he basically said, hey, you know, um, I hear that you're in California from this video. Um, I have, you know, a place in Central California. Um, if you ever felt that you and, and Tom wanted to come stay here for a bit, you're more than welcome to. And for me, that was like the ding, 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 ding that we're just so used to that when, you know, this, something has been kind of laid in our path that we just have to say yes to it. And so literally, um, we said, okay, let's talk, <laughs> right? And so we talked to him on the phone, asked a bunch of questions, bounced back and forth, and by the end of our conversation, it was an absolute 110,000% yes, 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 this is where you're supposed to be. And what was interesting about this is, is part of the whole, you know, um, following along with the goal that I'm God's child and heaven is my home, is that we can't worry about the, um, the safety nets of the body. Like, really, we can't. Like, our, to protect our body is not our, our first concern. And the thing with this place that was offered to us with Rex is that it was more so going to be on the land, at his shop, there was no bathrooms. And at this time, I had recently realized we were pregnant. So it was in the first trimester, and I wasn't always feeling the best physically, um, but it didn't matter. It was like when this answer came, it was like, yes, 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 there's no doubt, there's no question, this is what we're going to do. I didn't think about myself and my own personal comfort which I think is so important. You know, you can't think about your own personal comfort. You just have to trust that it's in God's hands and just follow the, the dinging yeses in your heart and in your soul when they come. And so we said yes, and we followed along with it. And then basically what came up from that was, okay, well, now we have to figure out how we're going to get from Southern California to Northern California. And so we asked him, like, hey, you wouldn't happen to know of anyone who's coming down to this area, would you, to bring us back up there? And he goes, actually... I might. And um, basically what it was is that his, his wife um, was taking care of some car shows that they do for, for VWs. And this was her last car show of the year. And it literally was 15 minutes away from where we were staying in LA. And um, basically she, she would be able to pick us up and, and take us back to this area here in Central California. Um, but the added bonus to that was that, um, A, uh, the two of them have been in kind of like the most difficult time in their lives. They've been together for 30 years, and uh, there's just a lot of healing that needs to take place, and so they've been calling out for that. And secondly, she's been watching my videos for a long time. Not a long time, but she had started watching my videos and, and was really um, aware of who I was. So Rex was trying to keep it a secret that it was me and was just kind of like, come on, do you mind like taking my two hippie friends, you know, back with you? And she was really iffy and she said, no, 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 many times. But then she changed her mind and realized, you know what, this one last time, I'll do a favor for you. Okay, I'll take that. 
and it was her decision to say yes. It was Rex's decision to invite us up, and it was our decision to say yes that made this whole experience happen. And so if you notice, all of it is made in faith. All of it is made in trust that this must be for the greatest good of everyone. I may not be like personally, you know, um, whatever, comfortable in this, but if it works for everyone, it works for me. And so we went along with it. And as soon as we showed up, and this was the Thursday that we had this conversation, it was on Sunday that we met her at the car show. And as soon as we met, it was like souls who had a contract that knew that they were meant to be together at this time. And it was incredible. Um, she was grateful that it was us. We were grateful that it was her. It literally was like this mutual recognition of, of shared purpose and shared healing and the perfect exchange of giving and receiving. And it couldn't have been more perfect. And so literally we spent that day together, drove six hours back to the central California. And on the way up, she's like, you guys, you know, if you really felt like you needed a place to stay, Rex's shop isn't always the best. You're welcome to stay here in this home with me. Oh my God. Now this was just an added bonus onto what we thought we were getting ourselves into. You know, so now we get welcomed into this home with three incredible kids. There's actually six of them, but three aren't in the home. And it literally has been the most miraculous experience to date. Like it just keeps getting better and better and better and better and better because that's just how God works. And so now being here, it's been like a perfect opportunity to just allow the healing to ensue between all of us and to have those demonstrations that when you put your trust and faith in God and the greatest good of everyone, that it always works out for everyone. Always, 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 always. And so I guess like that is my first example of what it's like to leave your decisions to the hands of God and to trust that everything's going to work out perfectly for you. Like literally, like Tom and I realized we were pregnant. We're still here on a visa in California. Like we realized we needed to make quote unquote decisions where we're going to be, where we're going to stay, who are we going to be with, where are we going to get money and what's going to happen? Like, are we going to go home? Are we going to stay? Like it appeared that we had all these decisions, but we constantly came back to the recognition that there's only one decision. And that one decision is who am I going to listen to? Who's my boss? Who's my authority? And from that recognition was that God is my boss. God is my authority, and I can trust him with my life. And from that one recognition that I can trust him in my life because, hey, I am God's child and my home is heaven, what you get to experience then is heaven on earth. And that's what begins to happen in our relationships. And so from that one experience, basically it's continued to open to so many more. But, ooh, family's here. Um, which is a fine, um, and, um, and so from the second part of that is that now here we are, we've been in this home for five months and totally, um, just helping each other and healing with each other and moving forward with what God promises us to do. And so here we are now, um, four or five months later, and it's time to make another step, right? It's recognition that, okay, we're going to have this baby soon <laughs> in three months time and um so we got to figure out where we're supposed to be in form and it took a lot of patience and and waiting um because hey i need to get a midwife hey we need to have to have this baby hey things need to happen and our friends here our family here um have just been like if you need to stay here you can stay here you know if you want to have a baby here you can have a baby here but we trust that it's in god's hands we join them and trust that it's god's hands so slowly but surely, the guidance continued to come, and um, we finally recognized that because of our projects um, and wanting to um, open them into an actual company, that Canada is the best place um, to do that. Plus, Canada has free midwifery. Uh, you know, Canada is where my family and friends are um, back home, and it just seemed like everything was moving in that direction, that that's where we we're supposed to be. So we finally said, okay, however that can happen, we want it to happen. And, um, and so literally what ended up happening is once we made that decision, okay, we're going to go back to Canada. This is for the greatest good of everyone. Let's see how this falls. Where are we going to live? We don't have a home, but let's just see. Um, what ended up happening is, um, I just went online and I started looking through, um, Airbnb, um, and Facebook and I found a post for a house in Toronto and it literally was a community setting. Um, it was month, to, uh, day to day. So it's not even month to month. We don't have to pay first and last. We can literally just show up and, 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 um, you know, uh, give per day and see what comes of it. 
Um, and so we kind of talked to these people and they had basically put out, you know, a, a, a calling to the universe, so to speak, that week and basically had said like, hey, you know, what type of person would you like to see in our house, you know, in this, in this space for a time being? And they said that they see um, a couple that perhaps is from this area but went away for a while and now they're coming back and this will be their temporary place until they find their home. Well, when Tom and I reached out to these, these ladies, they were basically like, oh my God, yet again, we are a direct answer to their prayers. And yet again, they are a direct answer to ours. We needed a place to stay when we went back home. The place showed up. They needed to someone to stay in their place we showed up. Again, it is the perfect exchange of giving and receiving. Why? Because we left it to God's hands. We didn't worry three months ago about where we're going to live, where we're going to stay, how we're going to get a midwife, how do we have the money for this, we don't have the money to do it in California. There was no fear. There was no doubt. Because in God's plan, being a child of God in heaven, there is no fear, there is no doubt. That's possible. God takes care of everything. Everything. And so now we have um, the date set up for when we're going home, February 23rd. Um, and then I started looking into kind of m places around there, like midwives around there. And of course, there's a midwife um, clinic that is a three minute drive from the house or a 20 minute walk from the house. And there was a midwife available, which everyone else was saying there wouldn't be until like August because I'm so late in my pregnancy. Um, but no, there is one waiting for me. And so she's right there and so close and Toronto is central to my family and friends. And it's just literally um, everything from the moment that that decision was given us to be made because we made it with God, um, everything has fallen into place. All the ducks are in order. Everything that we need for it to happen has been given us to make it happen. It literally has been so effortless, like this whole experience. Life, life is effortless, but it's only effortless when we allow it to be, because that's what life is. But when we interfere, it's totally effort because we're trying to do it by ourselves, we're trying to make it work by ourselves, we're trying to figure it out by ourselves, we're trying to make decisions by ourselves, and there's no way that that can happen. And so I literally feel like there's, it's chapter, I think, 30 in the A Course in Miracles, chapter 30, it talks about um, decisions, right? If I make no decisions by myself, this is the type of day that will be given me. And I feel that if you're going through this point in your life where you need to make decisions, you find it's hard for you to let the decisions be made by God if you feel that it is really um, an effort in your life, um, then maybe refer to, to chapter 30 and recognize that you're learning how to let your decisions not be made by yourself alone. That decisions can be made with you, with the Christ, with God, so that everything unfolds perfectly in your life, because that's how it's supposed to be. And this is literally how we can bring heaven here when we stop trying to make decisions by ourselves alone. Like, this is the most crucial lesson I feel that we can learn in all of this. And this is how we can live a life of joy, because God is joy, and God wills his son's perfect happiness. And we're, if we're not perfectly happy, it's because we have another will. We have another goal in our mind other than God's. So if even you can come back to questioning, what's my goal? Who do I see myself as? Am I a body? Am I home as this world? Or am I a child of God? And my home is heaven. What is it? What's real for me? And, and literally maybe one day just try on new boots <laughs> like I have. And, and literally just watch. Watch the miracles that unfold. Because miracles do not happen by conscious control. That's even one of the Course uh, principles. Miracles do not happen under conscious control. They are absolutely, completely involuntary. And we just have to be ready and willing. Jesus says we're already able. We just have to be ready and willing. So if you're ready and willing to let miracles happen, oh my God, they happen. And they happen by making decisions with God and not against Him. Okay, Miracles happen by making decisions with God and not against Him. And once we have that solidified relationship where I can trust him and he will take care of my life and he will take care of me and he will take care of my family, then everything will be perfectly okay. Like you need not fear for yourself or for anyone else because your children are God's kids just like you are. And that's what I feel about this baby. Like even though we're having this baby and we're not doing it in like the typical way that most people do it because we're almost doing it like backwards. Like this kid is God's kid. <laughs> he knows this kid is coming. It's part of the plan. Um, so I don't need to worry about it. 
I don't need to be afraid about it. I don't need to try and plan for it by myself alone because this is part of God's plan. Let's just remember that this is part of God's plan. Everything is part of God's plan and everything happens for my greatest good, even if it doesn't look like that way at first. And so I think that that is the message of the day. You know, let all your decisions um, be made through God and, and through the recognition of the goal that I am God's child and my home is heaven. And from that recognition, um, your life will become effortless, it will become joyful, it will become purpose-filled, and you literally will be given gifts to give. And um, it's really incredible because actually the gifts that Tom and I have been given to give for the last five years are almost done. I know I've been saying this for a long time, but who knows? It's God's plan. We don't set the time. He does. But it's literally like we are at the final, 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 final stages of everything stitching itself up. So just keep your eyes and ears open for the UMP, the Universal Mediation Program. I'll probably make a release video about that. We're doing introduction videos and, and tutorial videos and um, tra trailers for it and all that stuff. So. All that stuff will be going out, but I just want to say that we literally are given our perfect part in God's plan when we trust Him and know our home is in Him and know He loves us and know we love Him and know that we love our brothers and we can trust our brothers because God is in our brothers as much as He is in us. And this is how we have this whole web and intricate connection of miracles that happen because miracles happen between minds. And, and I've really started to realize that through prayer, all things happen. When I ask my father, it is given me. And, and, and I guess through that experience, my brothers are having the same de demonstration. When they ask for help, when they ask for healing, when they ask for anything, God will give it to them. We just have to let it in and we have to say yes. We have to say yes completely and wholly and entirely without fear. So let's say yes to God today without fear and receive everything that God has given us to give. And I promise you, I promise you, you will not regret it. <laughs> you will be happy because of it. And uh, you will live a life of miracles, as Jesus promises. I love you, beautiful souls. Thank you for being present with me today. Thank you for listening with me today. And uh, who knows when I'll pick up the video next. But uh, it'll happen in the perfect time. So let's leave all decisions to God. I love you. Bye. <laughs>